What's up? You got your boy Direct, aka Native Shade, reminding you to like and subscribe. Because today we're going to be talking about the Neve 500 series. What had happened was. Get these ginormous councils out of my face. If I see another one of these spaceships in my studio, heads are gonna roll. The year was the mid 2000s and technology had us all gassed. <laughs> we felt we didn't need watches anymore because we got the time on our cell phones. We felt we didn't need to go to the movies anymore. We can watch everything we want on YouTube. And if not YouTube, some illegal cracked video website where we could stream the latest bad boys movie for free. <laughs> Technology was rapidly advancing. Every aspiring producer pretty much had or was close to having their own home studio. Whether it was from an affordable Korg D16 or a cracked version of Reason, technology was creating new producers. And because of this, a lot of the legendary hardware music production businesses were actually going out of business or at least downsizing. Folks were not buying hardware gear like that anymore. It was so bad a Kai professional, makers of the MPC went bankrupt and was about to be kaput to the point they had to be rescued and purchased by some cats in music. M Audio had to be rescued by Avid, the company Pro Tools is under, and even Personas partnered up with Studio One to help them with their financial issues. Hardware companies were taking a hit. It's kinda like, remember back in the days when the schools used to mail you your report card? <laughs> You know, you're a young kid and you're just messing up in school, not doing your work and report card time comes and you learned your lesson from last year because when your mom saw it, she whooped your behind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this time you was like, yo, I'm gonna catch the mail lady in the act of delivering the mail and hide my report card from my parents. This is a genius idea. No one on earth has ever thought of this. <laughs> but you forgot one thing. Your little sister, genius. <laughs> Your sister comes home with her friends. Hey, mom, mom, I got straight A's, straight A's. Your mother's like, oh, wow, I'm so proud of you. It gives her a hug. And then she turns around and looks at you. <laughs> That's how much of a hit hardware companies were taking in the mid and late 2000s. But yet, even for hardware companies struggling at these difficult times, there was hope, and some of that hope came with the 500 series. In the late 60s, Lou Lindauer and Saul Walker designed a small mixing console that included a preamplifier, a compressor, and a couple of equalizers. Now this console was compact, something small, you know, a rack unit that you can actually fit in your bedroom if you wanted to. Well, fast forward to the mid and late 2000s when folks didn't really want the big rack units anymore. The 500 series was low key becoming more popular. And in 2013, Rupert Neve, the world famous mixing console developer and his company, Rupert Neve's Designs, released one of the dopest additions to the 500 series. And that was the 511 and 542 500 series. <laughs> You're getting custom made transformers by Rupert Neve himself. When he was a young lad, he used to have a job repairing transformers. The 511 is a marvelous mic preamp with up to 72 dB of gain and a high pass filter that can go from 20 Hertz to 250 Hertz. You're getting class A quality tapology. You're getting the classic silk texture effect where the output of the sound comes back in and gets saturated by the transformers to create a dope effect that Rupert Neves EQs was known for. On the 542 tape emulator, there's an actual tape head in the module. <laughs> not a plug-in, not some kind of weird effect, an actual tape head producing a sound that you would think that he just grabbed the whole 1980s and threw it in there. <laughs> 
on the 542, you're getting an input transformer, an output transformer, a playback EQ, a record EQ. Rupert from the ground up designed all the inputs and outputs and, and even the line amplifiers specifically for the 500 series warm factor and the voltage current and constraints. In other words, there's masterful craftsmanship put into this ish. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, when Rupert Needs Designs release the 511 and 542 500 series modules, a lot of people ran and got it. <laughs> Normally, this man's products would go for thousands of more dollars. And now you can get the mic preamp for just 500 bucks. This was a steal for those who wanted that immaculate sound. These two modules sold so well that a year later, they released the 551 EQ, which was a conductor EQ for the 500 series that gave you a lot of warmth and power in the low frequencies and an incredible air band and open sound on the high frequencies. Rupert Nee's been making these sort of products since the 60s. His products last the test of time. It's kind of like the car test. <laughs> like, fellas, you ever met a girl that always wanted you to open and close the car door for her? <laughs> you know, you've been dating her for like three months now, you know, and you've been opening car doors and <laughs> closing car doors for her, you know, doing the gentlemanly thing. You know what I'm saying? But you know, you're, you're kind of getting kind of tired of it. One day you decide, okay, I'm not gonna open the car door for her for this because we're just going to Home Depot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you get out the car, you close your door, and then you, you're going into Home Depot and you see her staying in the car. And you're like, oh, you're signaling her to come, come by and she's just sitting in there. So you, you go to the car door and you open it and then she comes out and says, yeah, I'm used to this now. <laughs> and then walks into the Home Depot with you. You are furious inside. You are sick and tired of holding these car doors. Oh, but yes, there is one answer, my friend. And that is the Bronx Tale car test. <laughs> Remember the movie Bronx Tale, the car test? Do the Bronx Tale car test and let her know about it? Trust me. You will not have to open a car door again until you're married. <laughs> the great thing about the 500 series was that these modules were really compact. You know, they didn't really take up space in your studio and they pretty much sounded really good because they were analog modules. Now, there are many brands of 500 series modules. Different companies make them, but they all pretty much follow the same way of installing. They come with these kind of pins in the back of the module and you install it into a small chassis, like a small rack slot. Kind of like you were installing your PC card to your computer or something like that. Now there are different chassis for the 500 series, like different racks for them. They, they call them lunch boxes and you can get a lunch box that could fit six modules. You can get one that could fit one module, you know? The prices vary pertaining to how big of a lunch box you need. So one that you could fit six of them in might cost you 400, while one that you could fit one in might cost you 150. They come with input and output slots for your ins and outs and a power cable. So when Rupert Nee's designs came out with their 500 series, the 511 mic preamp was about $542 and the 542 tape emulator was about $745. <laughs> now you gotta remember folks, those are really good prices considering what most of his stuff goes for. His legendary 1073 microphone preamp goes for about $3,700. <laughs> so this is a bargain. A lot of producers and sound engineers swear by the 500 series. Andy Meyer, who does mixing for Justin Timberlake, uses the Rupert Nee 500 series. Vince Casamata, who does mixing for Maroon 5, uses the Rupert Nee 500 series. The almighty EA Ski uses the Rupert Neve 500 series. <laughs> so yeah, folks, that's the Rupert Neve's designs, 511 and 542, 500 series modules. What had happened was... <laughs> so this is your boy, Direct, AKA Native Shades, reminding you 
to like and subscribe. And I'm signing off.